Hello everyone, my name is Marion with DTM Real Talk Channel. It's the channel that you can tune into, have the ability to listen to the thoughts of others about topics all over the world that touch every one of our lives. Everybody, everybody goes through basically the same thing. There is nothing new under the sun. So if you're going through, someone else has already been there. Maybe you can find hope. Maybe it's a pathway that can set you on the right road just by tuning in. So DTM, real talk, just keeping it real. And if you like it, like us at the bottom, subscribe, and let us know just how we helped you. Just keeping it real, nothing but love. Good evening, good morning. This is DTM Real Talk, and we're just keeping it real today. We're keeping it real this evening. And guys, thank you so much for the feedback. Uh, I have a special guest back, which you have requested because you asked the question by email, why do Christians still sin? And last week, say hi, Punya, to the good folks out there. Hello, everybody. Yeah, don't forget, y'all can only call him brother. I'm the only one that can say Punya, okay. But anyway, you were so clear, is Christianity a white man's religion? And you answered that very clear because of, of the feedback that I got back. People really understood. Christianity is real Christianity. It's just following the teachings of Jesus Christ. That's the bottom line. And no, it's not a white man's religion. What color is following the teachings of Jesus Christ? Go figure. <laughs> but anyway, you guys asked, why do Christians still sin? You know, I was thinking, you're going to answer that, right, Pooja? <laughs> You go, I'm going to do my best. I'm going to do my best to answer that. I know you are. I know you are. I am on my way out of the door. You know, I got a call from uh, your girl and, and she wanted to meet. She wants to meet me at, for coffee at two o'clock, the one I had the visit with last night. So she wants to meet me. Um, she's just amazing. So I'm going to meet her and we're going to chat. We're going to see what the Lord does. But um, anyway, why do Christians still sin? You know what I thought about? I thought about when I first accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, when I first surrendered, first, <laughs> why are you laughing? You don't even know what I'm going to say. <laughs> when, I, when I first got saved out there, y'all, when I first accepted Jesus, you know, he's my Lord. I was so sincere because God had delivered me from sin. But, you know, my main, how you say your choice of sin was promiscuity. I was so promiscuous. It was terrible. Not terrible, terrible. <laughs> and anyway, the other thing that I had going for against me was fighting and uh and i'm not talking about with your mouth i'm talking about with your fist y'all gotta remember my daddy was a prize fighter before he was a preacher right <laughs> right for you yes ma'am what did he teach us? what did he tell us if we would <laughs> well he, he he told us he said if you come to this house talking about somebody beat you i'm gonna beat you again <laughs> so we we really didn't have much of a choice <laughs> uh, we had to learn how to fight and 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 mother always taught me not to fight. Right. And daddy, and, and and daddy taught us if daddy taught us to fight. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. A poor person didn't know they was getting they wasn't getting a beating because they did you something. They was getting a beating because I was running for my life. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Where did they go yeah. back home and meet with my daddy? But anyway, when I first got saved, y'all, this is real talk. We was at this church. I don't know if you remember this or not. We was at this church and uh, it was predominantly a uh, white church, uh, my white brothers and sisters. And, and it was, it was nice. And uh, the preacher obviously were, was jealous or had some kind of stuff going on inside of him. And my brother, y'all got to understand, he, he's a, he's a, he loves to teach. He loves to teach. And he, I guess you can tell, but anyway, he was having these Bible classes, right? <laughs> he was having these Bible classes just because people were asking questions and he wanted to answer them according to God's word, right? You remember that? Yeah, I remember that very well. <laughs> yeah, and so he, people was coming from everywhere. Well, the preacher got wind of it, and it wasn't nothing wrong with that. It's like, okay, I might want to have a Bible class in my house and invite y'all. No, not no, y'all over all over the world. We can't do it. But anyway, I might want to invite you to the Bible class at my house. And he was having his Bible class, and people was coming from far and near, and we were having a good time. The Word of God was being opened, and you know, young believers like myself, I had just gotten saved. I was like, oh, hungry for the word of God. Why well, the preacher got wind of it and he got so jealous. Y'all tell me if this jealousy or not. <laughs> we went to church the next day. The man stood up in the pulpit and the man said, go back to Africa and preach. 
You want to have a Bible class? Go back to Africa, where you come from. <laughs> you remember that? I remember, yep. I remember something similar to that. And yep. so here's the thing. Me being just a new babe in Christ, being delivered from promiscuity, from anger, from, you know, <laughs> saved from sin. You know what I'm saying? I know, you know, it wasn't a hell thing. I know I was on my way to heaven because I believed on Jesus. So the hell thing wasn't that important as the brother said the other day. But that man was talking about my brother. <laughs> <laughs> I stood up in the middle of the church, y'all, and I was ready to go fight him. I can hear my brother say, sit down, Basil. <laughs> I was ready to go fight the preacher. <laughs> yes, indeed. You remember, you're cutting your head off. Your head off, all we see is your chin. There you go. All right. Okay, but anyway, all right, enough of me. Uh, I wanted you to answer the question. Okay, so the question is, why do uh, Christians still sin? And so, yeah, why do Christians still sin? I know that you're saved immediately once you believe on Jesus Christ. And, and, and a lot of the good folks out there know that. But I would like for you to explain that that positional salvation, it, how that process. Speak to that. Well, first of all, uh, let me just say that salvation is in only uh, one person, and that person is Jesus Christ. And that salvation consists of what he came to do. It does not consist of anything that other people may add to it. It is what he came to accomplish. He came to reconcile us to God by atoning for our sin, paying a debt that we owed God. We owed God the debt of obedience to a law that we could not keep. The penalty for that failure is death. And Christ died in our place as our substitute to pay what we owe to appease or satisfy the righteous demands of God's law for justice. Mm -hmm. Justice is the penalty for sin is death. However, when Christ died at the cross of Calvary, he did several things. Mm -hmm. One of the things he did was he atoned for or paid for our sins by delivering us from the penalty, right. which is death. But then he also, in his resurrection, he delivered us from the power of sin. Right. Now, being delivered from the power or authority or dominion of a thing does not mean that uh, he eradicated or removed sin from us. What he did was he removed po sin's power over oh, us. God. That's right. And the what is expected and what is what God's word teaches is that God saves us to transform us into the image of his son. Mm -hmm. But that transformation, we call it conversion or some people call it sanctification. And some people call it transformation too, right? Yes, well, that transformation is, in fact, a process. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, it is a process that takes place over time, rooted in, number one, the presence of the Holy Spirit, if you're saved, and number two, a constant intake of the Word of God, yes. because the Holy Spirit uses the Word of God to identify areas of sin that you're not aware of. Right. And everywhere there is sin uh, dominating or sin uh, that, let's say, where well, you have strongholds in your life, mm -hmm. uh, you need truth to break the chains of that. Right. This is why Jesus our Lord said, uh, if you keep my words, then are you my disciples indeed. And then he says, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Notice, it is the word of the Lord, truth. Yes. That frees the believer from the power of sin so that though you're not sinless, you do sin less. less. Yes. And 
the goal in preaching and teaching is to inform the believer correctly from the word of God so that in the truth of the word, we can be free, free right. from sin's dominion, authority, and power. Now, people that are new believers, they don't get that yet. And so sometimes uh, their faith in Christ gives them access into the grace of God. But Paul, the Apostle Paul often said to the believers, I would not have you to be ignorant. That's because as new believers, we are ignorant of a lot of things. There are things we don't know. And in proportion to how well and thoroughly we are taught, that gives us what we need because sanctification is the work of the Holy Spirit using the word of God in conjunction with the mm -hmm. will of the believer, which mm -hmm. means that every believer has to actually make a choice. When yeah. you have truth, expose your weaknesses, expose your sin, expose you where you are, there's something you got to do. Yeah. And that is you've got to receive the testimony of God's truth, of Christ's word, Christ's teachings. If his teachings identify you as wrong, you receive that. Right. When you receive that, that means you confess it, you acknowledge it, you call it what it is, you mm -hmm. don't make excuses for it, <clears throat> you don't deny it, you don't minimize it, you let it be what it is. <clears throat> and then once you have admitted that, you confess it to the Lord. Yes, yes. Now, upon confession, the Lord is free at that point to deliver you from its power because you've acknowledged clearly its presence. Yes. You're not in denial. You, If you deny your guilt, then you remove personal responsibility to change anything. Right, right. When you say things like, the devil made me do it, yeah, you giving have, the devil so much credit, blame it on him. Well, well, not only that, yeah. what you have done is you've released yourself from responsibility to make a, decision. make a decision. When you say that what I did was because of somebody else or something else, that means that you are no longer responsible. Right. And God does not teach us to be irresponsible. He teaches us to face the truth tell the truth because we are indwelt by the spirit of truth. We are children of the truth. Jesus Christ is the truth. God is the God of truth. And yes. therefore, if we are related to God, we're going to tell the, the truth. truth. We're yes. going to admit the truth. Yes. We're going to proclaim the truth. We're not going to lie about it. What I did was what I did, but it's not who I am. My That's past true. is in the past, but in the present, presently, that's not who I am. Amen. I am someone else. I'm a new creature, a new creation in Christ Jesus because of what Christ has done for me. Not mm -hmm. because of anything in myself, but right. he's at work, clearly at work in me. And so I'm constantly being transformed. Yes. And do I fail? Yes, I may fail. But when I do, I'm not lying about it. I'm yes. acknowledging the truth. Right. And moving on, because where I am is not where I'm going to stay. Absolutely. Now, that was clear. Yeah. So, I, you know, and they need to know, tell the people, I didn't get there that fast. It took me a while to stop wanting to fight. Well, <laughs> the, tru the truth is, uh, <laughs> I, I've been doing I, I've been doing this for quite a while, but I got a few T-shirts in my closet. That I says, know that's right. That says stupid. So. Uh, I'm <laughs> teaching you from both the teachings of God's word, but also from some practical things that I learned by my own failures yeah. and uh, how I misunderstand, misunderstood rather. Um, I I thought when I got saved, I, I, I loved the Lord so much till I wasn't going to sin against him again. I just felt like mm. I couldn't sin against such love for me that he would let me call him my father mm. and, and 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 knowing what I knew was in me that did something 
to me. It made me not want to sin ever again. Right. But nobody told me until later, uh, until I had my first encounter with my flesh after I got saved. And it was devastating to me mm -hmm. because my intentions were sincere. Right. But uh, you have a whole on that brother, That's right. My Christian brother came to my rescue to help me sort through the reality of while I've been delivered from sin by Christ, mm -hmm. that changed my position instantly. I instantly became a child of God. But I progressively mm. am becoming converted or changed over to live out my new position, which Amen. means my condition changes gradually. Yes, 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 yes. And what I think, though, Punya, if, correct me if I'm wrong, is that a lot of Christians don't understand the four enemies that they have to continually deal with until Christ returns. They don't Amen. understand that. Amen. Speak to that. Speak to that. Well, there, there four. are four, and, and I will say four fundamental enemies. Yeah, fundamental we yeah. have we have a number of enemies, but we have four fundamental enemies that I like to cite. The mm. first one is sin, but Christ took care of that at the cross of Calvary. Right. He took sin's power and authority away so that it no longer has authority or dominion over those of us who believe. But sin has left its footprint all over our lives. Right. And as a result, uh, we are affected by the sin by which we were infected. So this affecting of us, how does it affect us? It leaves, I, I usually say it leaves its footprints in our consciences, mm. in our minds. And, and as a result, enemy number two is yourself. Right. Because you have to change the way you think. Yeah. You were programmed to think a certain way when you were in the world. And if you don't get the word of God in you regularly, right. uh, a regular dietary intake of God's word, if you don't get that in you uh, regularly, then... I like that. Say it again. Regular what? Huh? Say that a again. regular dietary intake, a spiritual diet gotcha. of gotcha. God's word coming into you right. often. Some, some, some believers only... They only read their Bibles on or Sunday. hear the word of God on Sunday. Yep. That's all you get in your spiritually anemic. As a matter of fact, you might be on the, on the verge of spiritual death. Right. Anybody that eats only once a week, it, it, it's, it's a wonder if they survive. Yes. But the truth is, Jesus, our Lord, abstained uh, from food for 40 days. So you might survive a month. But here is my point. Spiritual food, you need that daily. Yes. Because that's a part of what it takes to trans to transform you. Right, uh, right. You need the Holy Spirit, but you need the word of God working all that stuff out of you. Everything that holds you, it holds you through a lie. Mm. Once again, everything that you can't seem to shake is because there's a lie that you have believed. Right, right. That's behind that. Right. You don't know what it is yet, but as the word of God is faithfully preached to you, eventually we land on the truth that unlocks or breaks the chain, unlocks the lock, and you get to walk free. Mm. Here is the problem. That is in you. Your understanding has been shaped by your past, mm. your past experiences, the yep. things you learn. You need the word of God to change that. change that. The proof of that is in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, where mm -hmm. it says, and be not conformed to this world. That yeah. is, don't be pressured, molded, and shaped by this world, right. but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The word renew has to do with the reconstructing of your thoughts. Mm -hmm. It's not that your thoughts of the past are eliminated. It's just that they're rearranged. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts of the past are no longer your frame of reference. Right. Your frame of reference becomes the new truth that right. you hear 
believe and receive. That yeah. becomes your frame of reference yeah. instead of your past. Yeah, what you feed and the most, that's what grows that's, up. That's correct. And so yeah. there is sin, enemy number one. Enemy number two is yourself. That's right. why you need the word of God. Enemy number three is the world around you. Yes. Be not conformed to this world. The word conform there has to do with you being pressured, molded, and shaped by the culture around you, the world in which you live. It has its own values, its own standards, right. and it has nothing to do with what Jesus has taught us. And so as a result, the world is your enemy. Mm. Not the people of the world, but the world system is your enemy. The way the world operates yes. is your enemy. The world philosophies, that's your enemy. You love the people, but hate the system. Mm. Right? Enemy number four mm. is our adversary, the, our opponent, the devil himself. Mm. Now, you must come to an understanding of how he works. He does not work. I mean, and he's been warming the same stuff over and over and over. It, 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 if you study the scriptures, if you study life, you will see where everybody gets tripped up by the same fundamental things. Mm -hmm. There are three things that he uses, all of which are located inside of you. Mm. In other words, the devil's ability to manipulate us, to tempt us, lies in what's inside of us. We give him ammunition. That's correct. <laughs> and John described what's inside of us. He said, the lust of the flesh. Mm -hmm. The word lust means the strong appetites of the flesh. The lust of the eyes, mm -hmm. things you want to see, and the, and the pride of life, mm -hmm. the things you want to be or accomplish. Mm -hmm. So there is what you want to feel, the lust of the flesh, what you want to see, the lust of the eyes, and what you want to be or accomplish, that's the pride of life. Yes. Mm -hmm. These three things are three things that our adversary, our opponent, the devil, always uses yeah. over and over. Yes. To trip us up. This is why it's so important for you to be taught. So you can learn to recognize the lust of the flesh, the lust that I have, and the pride of life, no matter what clothes it's wearing, no matter how it's dressed up and made to look like something else. Right. Most of us, we get tripped up because we're accustomed to these three looking a certain way. And when they change clothes mm. and they're dressed differently. We don't see them. Right. You, We've got to learn how to recognize the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Learn how to recognize them, mm -hmm. no matter what clothes they put on, no matter how they're dressed. Right. And so, uh, yes, believers can struggle with sin until we learn these things and recognize these fundamental enemies. I'll add this enemy. Another enemy is, is ignorance. Yeah. That is an enemy of ours. It is a fundamental enemy of ours, just not knowing. Right. But right. everybody comes in not knowing something. That's so right. the goal is for you to become informed, to learn, and to not measure yourself by what the world thinks. They don't even understand why Jesus Christ came or the process. Don't measure yourself by their opinion of you. They really are not qualified to judge who you are as a believer, or to judge your status as a believer. Mm -hmm. If you have exercised faith in Jesus Christ, God has transformed your heart and your life, then you are God's workmanship. God is at work Amen. on you, in you, and nobody else knows what God is bringing you to and what he's bringing you through to get Amen. you where you need to be. That's right. Nobody knows. That's right. That's right. Amen. I hope y'all got it because it's pretty too good. excited. You get excited when you hear what the work of the Lord Jesus has done in and through you. That's what you get excited. <laughs> I control myself. You know, you know how they used to say, I look back over my life. I, mm -hmm. I look yeah. back over my life <laughs> and wonder how I got over. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, I hope y'all got it. Why do Christians still sin? That's why. Because of being ignorant of a few things. Amen. A few things. Their 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 salvation positionally, their salvation uh practically. 
a lot of believers, young believers, they're not aware of that. Uh, believers are not aware of the four fundamental enemies. And they are. Sin itself, which Jesus dealt with on the cross. Yourself. Amen. You can destroy yourself more, better and more than anybody. <laughs> the world around you. Yes. The world around you and Satan himself. And lastly, another fundamental uh, ignorance, just not knowing. So when you don't understand these things, it's easy to think that maybe maybe I'm not saved or or maybe, maybe, maybe Christ didn't die for me or maybe he can't die for me because I've done so much bad stuff. You don't understand these things because you don't have the knowledge of God's word. The more you feed on the word of God, the more your spirit man will grow. Amen. The less you feed, you're going to starve and practically die spiritually that is so we hope um you enjoyed it we hope you got some insight and punya thank you so much and the good folks out there i'm sure they're saying thank you so much and lastly what would you say to the young christian very briefly what would you say to the person that just trusted christ as lord and savior and then what would you say to the older christian that's that just got enlightened speak to that well, I would say to the young Christian, find yourself a Bible preaching, Bible teaching, Bible believing, Bible practicing church so that you can be in an environment that's conducive to your spiritual growth. Uh, don't get caught up with denominational issues, but allow truth to be the foundation that guides your choices, your decisions uh, as to where you're going to be. You may start off at one place, but as you continue in the truth of God's word, God may open your eyes and you realize this was a good place to start, but not a good place to stay. And so you may need to move on, but start somewhere where people love the Lord Jesus Christ and in an, you can be in an environment that, uh, that promotes and encourages your growth in godliness and your growth in purity your growth in wisdom mm. and, and in the practice of righteousness. Um, if you at a place like that, just know that there's no place you're going to go that's going to be everything that it's supposed to be. Because again, all of us got issues. And even among the same, they got people with issues. Right. But you may find some issues wherever you are, but don't let that become the main thing. Let the word of God become the main thing that you uh, pursue. And uh, to an older believer, let me just say to you, you need to make sure that you recognize you are the light that Christ has left in the world. And it is your responsibility to be light to the younger Christians, to be nurturers of the younger Christians that are coming up. Uh, don't make your church membership all about you being satisfied. Mm. make it about you promoting the kingdom of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Yeah. And yeah. taking young believers, you should have somebody over you pouring into you, but you should have somebody under you that you're pouring into. That's so right. as young believers, you, I mean, as older believers, you grab a young believer and share with them things that you've learned, uh, mistakes you've made, be transparent, be authentic. Don't be trying to project yourself as, having not failed or tell the truth mm. tell the truth and but let them see where god has brought you that's all yes, yes 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 thank you so much thank you so much and again until next week this is dtm real talk and we're just doing what keeping it real we'll see you next week DTM Real Talk. Be sure to join us for more conversation. And oh yeah, don't forget to hit that like button, share, and subscribe while you're there.